So in this mini-series, we are going to talk about things that we should consider when choosing our next racket. If you've been following this channel, you'll know that I have gone through the recent process of selecting my new racket and I will reveal that in due time. But there are about five things that you need to consider, maybe even more, when it comes to your choice of racket. At the end of the day, it's a personal choice, but I'm just going to go explain and go through a few factors that need to be considered before we make that big choice. Without further ado, let's get into this topic. The last consideration, but probably the most important consideration to make when it comes to choosing the type of racket that you're going to use for the season or during your matches will be the feel. So at the end of the day, nothing can replace the feeling that you get when you have a racket in your hand and you go onto a squash court and you feel that this is a racket that is suited for you and your playing style. And in order to determine that, there are a few things that you need to consider when it comes to feel. Normally what should happen before you actually select a racket and purchase it, if your racket shops allow you to do that or you have friends which have the racket that you want to try, is that you need to be able to get the racket on court and actually go through a few range of scenarios before determining if this is a good racket for you. So ideally you'd be able to play either a game which would hopefully expose you to all the type of shots that you'll need to play with a racket, but if you aren't playing a game and you just actually want to test it out, maybe you too scared to uh, take a racket out that you haven't purchased yet and actually play a full game with it. So here are a few scenarios that you need to try and see if you have a good feel of the racket when it comes to choosing a racket. So player drives from the back, player drives from the middle of the court from the front because these are your bread and butter of squash at the end of the day. You need to be able to feel that you are confident with the drives and the length that you are getting and also the accuracy that you're getting with the shots that you or trying the racket for. Look at how you feel when you play your volley so you can do butterfly bows in the front of the court and actually try to use your volleys at the end of the day and see if you can hit your volley long and short to see how it is the racket is. How do you feel at the end of the day when your racket is down if your racket preparation is not good? Can you get the racket up early? Are you a person that actually volleys at all? If not, maybe that's something that's not as important to you. Take it through a scenario of playing your drop shots. So hit drop shots from the back of the court, from the middle of the court, from the front of the court. How does it feel? Um, is the tension right? Is the tension incorrect? Is, do you feel that this head shape, a different head shape, would be better suited for you when you play your drop shots? You also need to ask yourself how often do you play your drop shots or how often do you want to play drop shots? If drops are something that you use in your arsenal, maybe it will be a very important scenario for you to actually take and test a racket for drop shots on both your forehand, on your backhand, from a volley and even from mid-court as well as the back of the court. Maybe not a lot of players that play lobs, but you know, at the end of the day, figure out how it is that you feel when you have to play a lob shot. Uh, you take the racket on court, um, run through a scenario playing a few lobs, hit a boast to yourself or hit a boast from the middle of the court and then try to place a lob shot in the back corners. How does the racket feel to you? Do you feel that the tension is right? Do you feel that the head shape makes it a bit difficult? These are the things that you need to consider when you're testing up a racket. At the end of the day, since everyone is trying to obviously hit the best drive, try out your bow shots. Try your bow shots from the back when you're in defensive positions. How does it feel when you hit the bow shot? Do you have to generate a lot of power? Does your swing up exaggerate it? Do you have to get closer to the ball? How do you feel when you're about to play this defensive bow shot? How does the shot come off? These are things to consider. Also, not only defensively, but attacking bows. If attacking bows are in your arsenal, you need to basically take a racket through scenarios where you'll be playing attacking bows. Does the ball land where you want it to go? Do you feel that there is sort of the proper feedback and feel in your hands that you feel confident about certain type of shots? For me, um, since I've played with this racket for so long, obviously before trying the Supremes, I sometimes know when my attacking bows will die out in the nick because there's a certain feedback and response that I have and that's why it's very hard for me to deviate from this racket because I know how it feels on my racket. So these are the things that you need to consider at the end of the day. Feel is going to be the most important factor. It's a personal choice to choose a racket and change a racket at the end of the day. So how does it feel in your hands? Since you need to be the person that is confident in playing shots from different types of scenarios. Maybe even trying a new racket gives you options and ability to play different type of shots. Maybe it's something to consider. So when going to touch and feel a racket, go through these scenarios of squash shots because may, you might find that now that you have a different type of racket or a racket which is more suited to you, you might even have new options available for you at the end of the day. So thanks for watching this episode in the mini-series about what you need to consider when choosing your next racket. If you have any comments, suggestions or corrections that need to be made, 
for people in the community that are interested in picking out a new racket that would fare them best on the squash court, please put a comment down below and let's have a discussion about it. Take care. Cheers.